guys uh, welcome to another session on diabetes mellitus and in this session we will be discussing about diabetic ketoacidosis this diabetic ketoacidosis is a very important complication of diabetes mellitus and for you it is very important as well because it is an essay question for your university examination the most important hallmark feature is dehydration The second hallmark feature of diabetic ketoacidosis is acidosis. And the third feature of diabetic ketoacidosis is hyperglycemia. So before we go into the management of diabetic ketoacidosis, we will first understand what happens in diabetes mellitus. So as you know insulin is a hormone that is secreted by the beta cells of the pancreas and insulin it stimulates the movement of glucose from the plasma into various tissues like skeletal muscles and adipose tissue so insulin increases the utilization of glucose that is present in the plasma so in diabetic ketoacidosis there will be reduced insulin secretion and when insulin secretion is reduced this will reduce the utilization of glucose by tissues so when glucose is not utilized it will stay in the plasma and it will increase the levels of glucose that is present in the plasma so even though there is large amounts of glucose that is present in the plasma the tissues are not able to utilize this glucose so tissues are in starvation so this state will stimulate the release of stress hormones and these stress hormones are glucagon which is released by the alpha cells of the pancreas two hormones are released from the adrenal gland from the adrenal cortex cortisol is re released and from the adrenal medulla epinephrine is released and from the anterior pituitary growth hormone is released so the stress hormones released are glucagon from the alpha cells of the pancreas cortisol and epinephrine from the adrenal and also growth hormone from the pituitary gland so these stress hormones produces changes in the normal metabolism or normal pathways of glucose metabolism so these stress hormones will stimulate the synthesis of glucose from fats amino acids and also from glycogen so glucose is available in high amounts in the plasma and our body is making more glucose from fats amino acids and also glycogen so this will increase the plasma levels of glucose to a considerable extent but still there is reduced insulin so cells are essentially in starvation these hormones also stimulate the breakdown of adipose tissue and this will result in release of free fatty acids into the plasma normally the free fatty acids circulating in the plasma will be taken up by the liver and they will be converted into very low density lipoprotein or vldl but in the presence of glucagon these free fatty acids will be taken up by the liver and they will be converted to ketone bodies and these ketone bodies will be used for energy
and these ketone bodies are used because glucose cannot provide the energy which the body is requiring because uh, insulin is present at a lower level so normally the ketone bodies which are produced by the liver are two one is acetoacetic acid and the second one is beta hydroxybutyric acid and both of these are acids so to maintain the ph of plasma this acetoacetic acid and beta hydroxybutyric acid will be neutralized by combining with bicarbonate so when more amount of acetoacetate and beta hydroxybutyrate are formed more amount of bicarbonate will be utilized and that will result in reduction in bicarbonate so this will result in the development of acidosis so when the person develops acidosis there will be development of compensatory mechanisms to counteract this acidosis and the most important mechanism by which the person can excrete excess amounts of h plus ions or acidosis is by hyperventilation so by hyperventilating the person will excrete more amount of carbon dioxide so that will reduce the h plus ions present in his body so this compensatory hyperventilation seen in diabetic ketoacidosis is known as kussmaul respiration the ketone bodies also stimulate the vomiting center so this will result in nausea and vomiting so when there is acidosis there is increase levels of h plus ions present in the plasma h plus ions are increased in the plasma so this h plus ions which are present in the plasma will be exchanged for k plus ions or potassium ions which are present in the intracellular so this exchange happens and this will result in increased levels of serum potassium and in diabetic ketoacidosis there is reduced levels of insulin so the tissues cannot utilize glucose so glucose will be present in high amounts inside the plasma and glucose is an osmotically active substance so this glucose will draw fluid from the intracellular to the extracellular or into the intravascular compartment so the blood volume increases so when the blood volume increases the renal perfusion also increases so when renal perfusion increases and when there is excess amount of glucose present in the plasma this will be excreted in urine and since glucose is an osmotically active substance when glucose is lost through the urine water also goes along with glucose so this will result in loss of water and when water moves along with this glucose some of the ions also move along with this water especially potassium ions so this will result in severe dehydration of diabetic ketoacidosis so about the precipitating factors for diabetic ketoacidosis diabetic ketoacidosis does not occur in every individual there should be some precipitating factor for diabetic ketoacidosis and the most important precipitating factor for diabetic ketoacidosis is infection so in infections what happens is that the demand for insulin increases so the person is already diabetic his insulin secretion is less or his insulin is not acting properly and when the demand increases the person cannot supply that excess amount of insulin so that will result in reduced utilization of glucose and that will trigger diabetic ketoacidosis and the second most important precipitating factor is 
inadequate insulin administration so the patients who are already taking insulin if they are not administering insulin adequately his blood glucose levels increase and since insulin is not available in the required amount this will trigger diabetic ketoacidosis and it is also commonly seen in newly detected diabetes mellitus so coming to the clinical features of diabetic ketoacidosis the most important clinical feature is nausea and vomiting that is associated with diabetic ketoacidosis this is due to the stimulation of vomiting center by ketone bodies diabetic ketoacidosis also can result in severe abdominal pain since there is excess fluid loss from the body this can result in dehydration and since large amount of water is excreted from the body this can result in hypotension and hypotension will trigger the release of catecholamines and that will result in stimulation of the heart and this can produce tachycardia